Yes, and here is Michael now getting ready here at the Cambridge Guildhall for your performance this evening. People are going to be hanging on your every word about your life and times, especially with your work that you've done with the Sick Children's Trust, a charity extremely close to your heart. It is indeed uh, close to my heart. I've been involved for over 30 years with the same charity and, uh, and for the last 30 been president. So uh, something truly, truly dear to me. Yeah, and you kindly allowed our cameras with you this morning to Acorn House, one of the homes run by the Sick Children's Trust. And uh, joining you there was our reporter, Elodie Harper. For toddler Bella Rabbits and her parents, Acorn House is a home from home. A year ago, Bella's parents stayed here for several months while she had life-saving treatment at Adambrooks. Her mum slept on the ward by Bella's bed, but being based here meant her dad could also stay and keep the family, who live in Chelmsford, together. And it's just nice to be able to go somewhere that isn't clinical um, as well for a break. So I would often come over and have like a sleep or just chill out off the ward for a few hours while her dad was over there instead of sitting in a hospital canteen or something like that. It was just nice to come to a home. Today, Bella is back for ongoing treatment and also met a new friend. Where's he gone? As president of the Sick Children's Trust, Michael Crawford makes regular visits and was certainly a huge hit with Bella. Peek and boo you are. Who's around there? Visits to entertain the children is all part of what makes Acorn House special. The place aims to be much more than just a bed to stay. When a family arrives with nothing, they've just been rushed in an emergency ambulance. They have nothing with them. They have no clue where they're going to sleep, where they're going to go, where they're going to get food from, where they're going to do their washing. Um, and we can take them in, um, give them their bedroom, make them a cup of tea. Um, let them have a hot shower and then they feel much more able to then go back over to the hospital and deal with whatever they need to deal with over there. I'm chasing you. <laughs> you chasing me. Michael Crawford says everything here revolves around the children, which is how it should be. There's got to be the relationship with the, with the patient, with the child. And she can't, she's a bundle of energy. <laughs> and she's worn me out. I do eight shows a week at Barnum. I, I, this, you'd be a good trainer, Bella. You'd be a good little trainer for me. At this point, Bella decided we had borrowed her friend for long enough as he was needed for the more important job of building her a farm. There we are. Elodie Harper, ITV News. Well, that was filmed a little bit earlier. Thank you so much for letting us come along with you to Acorn House this morning. You can see what it means to you. It, it is, and it's always very, very difficult because you, 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 one has to put oneself into the position of that family to, to empathise with what, what is actually happening for them. If, if, if it weren't for the Sick Children's Trust, it's that, that family, say they live in South End, mm. they have specialised treatment from Addenbrooke's Hospital and they have to travel up. And it's an hour and three quarters. So you can't do that every day, for, and the cost of it as well. You've been involved with the Sick Children's Trust for over 30 years now. Yes. How did you get involved and, and why? Well, it starts with a, with a really maybe silly story, but, but I, I was nine and I'd had my tonsils out, and this literally changed my life. I was, my mother was, uh, I was in Dartford in Kent and I'd had the tonsils out and the next morning I'm still sitting there in bed with, you've been bleeding and yeah. the, the blood on the sheets and it's, and I was so frightened. I, I woke up and my mother was late and I was terrified not to have my mother's arms around me. Yeah. And you imagine these little ones where I see things that are so distressing and with tubes and, and it's, it's unbearable to look at. If they're not close with their family and their mother's not holding their hand, it, it ceases to help the healing. Yeah. So you can help children to heal faster by keeping the family together. The Sick Children's Trust does an incredible job. So many fantastic charities do wonderful jobs in our region and in the Indeed. country. Are you amazed by the British capacity to keep giving as we do? I grew up with it, so I hopefully am part of it. We did sport relief two years ago when I, I did a little Some Mothers skit. We raised uh, £75 million. Mm -hmm. 
pounds. That is extraordinary and comic relief. Other, other the, the, the lesser known charities that, that uh, they still appeal and they get results from people who are caring. Do you still get a few little butterflies? I saw the face just... Oh yes, do as you, you mention it, um, my, my stomach's going. You, right. You've got to, I mean, if you're telling a story that you hope is humorous, you don't know that it's humorous until somebody laughs at it. So, yeah. And yet you've just... been on the stage for, in front of, uh, over the years, millions and millions and millions, including Frank Spencer. 25 million used to watch an episode of that. That was just extraordinary, yes. I mean, the, the sad thing is we, we wouldn't, uh, with health and safety, yeah. I wouldn't be able to do what, what we did in those days. Yeah. Well, you talked about health and safety there. Absolutely extraordinary. When you see that, what, what comes to mind? I, I laugh. I mean, I can't help but laugh because it's, it's another person. To me, I, mean, I know there's a lot of me there, yeah. but to me there isn't. Right. <laughs> it's only people who say, oh, I can see it. Yeah, but they're... did you have to persuade people to allow you to do it at the time? Because it seems extraordinary. No, I had the most amazing producer, right. a man called Michael Mills, yeah. who's sadly no longer with us, but he was... He was like a ship's captain and was always, right, come along, this isn't funny, let's get going. <laughs> he was always serious. And when Michelle and I, she, one year we, did, we played the Nativity. Yeah, Michelle de Trees. Yes, about. Yes, Michelle de Trees, I'm sorry. Yeah. And we are still such friends. We, uh, yes. I speak to her at least twice a week. She's, she, we just get on very, very well. And she, uh, we, I was being lowered down as the angel of the I Lord. Remember it, yes. And yeah. the, 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 the man who was operating the equipment yeah. had been overserved uh, just leading up to the show <laughs> recording. Right. And he virtually let me slide down too fast on the, on the line. He's yeah. supposed to do this as I come in. And he went like that and caught me just before I touched the ground. So I went, oh! <laughs> and I said, oh, well. That's ruined my Christmas. Well, let's leave Frank there and uh, take a look back at the other... I suppose in, in your, your career sort of seen different sections, hasn't it? And if we pass now to the 1980s, we're into the musical section, aren't we, with yes. Barnum and then, of course, the role which everyone will know you for so many times throughout the years, and that is Phantom of the Opera. Well, that's not too bad. I like, I like him to remember that. <laughs> it, uh, it did change my life completely, and, and then... We took it to America and, of course, you became... They had no idea that I played comedy. So you were... You, were, you had another persona over there entirely. They had no idea. that. So if you did crack a joke, they thought, oh, my God, this guy, is, he's hysterical. I've never seen anything. He's so serious. And so I was known as really serious because it was a romantic. Yeah. All they saw was this romantic. Was singing always part of you? Is that always part of it? Yes, I, I mean, I started as a 12-year-old singing for Benjamin Britten yeah. um, in Let's Make an Opera. It was the very first thing I ever did professionally. And it was the very first thing I did as an amateur at school. Our school never did anything. And I, and I, I was given this part to play. And for the first time, I, I, I was doing things on a stage and people in the audience were laughing and I wasn't getting sent out the classroom because <laughs> normally I was, I, I missed most classes because I was in the corridor. Um, and, and, and this was the first moment I thought, I like this. And you, you're still as hungry as ever, still with the same goals and ambitions? No, I, I think I, I've slowed down. It's like coming here to Cambridge. I used to come here many times on tours before we went into London with plays. I never really absorbed Cambridge because I was too busy thinking about my lines that I had to learn. We're only here for a week. You've got to learn things. You've got to be ready and you're, you're in work mode. And now I come back and I look, I look around and I see the beauty of the city and it's, uh, it's, it's staggering. So there's that pleasure to come in life when, you, when you, the years move on a bit. Yeah. You begin to stop being interested in having to make a living, having to achieve something, having to make money, educate your children. Yeah. To, so it, it does ease all that and you can begin to enjoy the world itself.